as an actress and a person, Elena Huffman!
up to me, and she was so lovely. She's been a friend and mentor of mine um, ever since. And she was like, you are in for a hell of a ride. And I never, I didn't understand what she meant until like a couple years later when I'm like doing conventions and meeting fans. Um, and really, I, there's not one in particular because there's a lot of really sweet moments that I think in a collective, it's just the opportunity for us. We make these shows in these like dark warehouses in the middle of the night, mostly in Canada, um, <laughs> in the rain. Um, and then, you know, we go back to our own lives and, and get onto a new show or, you know, have our own experiences. And then we come to these things and everybody like comes together over this one little show. So I just think it's the experience of kind of like I say, it's our version of touring. Um, so I just, I really appreciate all the experience and I love that people come up. I'll, I'll have, particularly with Stargate and, and more so now with Supernatural, but with Stargate, a lot of times families will come up to me and there's like, like, we started watching this when we had kids that were home sleeping on Friday night and now the kids are like towering over the dad. And, and they're like, it's still like our family time. So I love that. It's really sweet. Thank you. One, um, one girl at Memento in Pittsburgh, she invited us all to her wedding, which was really sweet. And, yeah, and she actually had been sick and found Supernatural um, in her hospital, which I, I've heard that story a lot as well. And so it's just this really sweet little thing that connects us all, which is really nice. So I'm very grateful to be a part of it. I had, who knew? <laughs> who knew we were doing this? Yeah. Even, even like all of us, like we didn't all know each other and all of a sudden like I watched everybody's kids grow up and get married and you know, it's just been such a great experience. We've toured all over the world together and yeah, it's nice. And we're on this weird text thread where she gets on me sometimes. <laughs> also, there's so many of us on it, so there's like always somebody's birthday. You know, anyway. Next question. Hello, it's great to meet you. I'm so glad you could come. Um, lots of people on Supernatural played more than one character, and I was really impressed with how you played both Josie and Abaddon, because they're wildly different characters. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your process of creating and developing those two different sides, and any maybe memorable behind the scenes moments um, playing Josie or playing Abaddon. Sure, thank you. Um, so I've told this story before, so forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but when I first got the audition for Supernatural, what, what usually happens, the process is like your agent will email you the audition and you read, and my first, ex my first response was like, that show's still on? <laughs> Go back season eight. <laughs> and, and really, more, more so that I was shocked that it was on, because if demographically you're right for a show, you audition for it a handful of times before you ever get on it and I had never auditioned for it before. So it was just kind of shocking to me. I was like, oh yeah, that's weird that I hadn't gone in. Meanwhile, I had been pregnant a lot, so that made a lot of sense too. <laughs> um, but the first, when Abaddon, or Josie, first shows up and, and becomes Abaddon, in that first episode, she gets um, stabbed in the back, shot in the face, and her head gets chopped off. <laughs> that was the audition scene. <laughs> and I, was, I remember this, I was at the park with my kids, it was two pages, which is a great audition. Like sometimes you get these auditions that are like 12 pages with a Russian accent, and you're like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one scene, and if you like me, like put somebody in the room with me that can make a decision. Um, that's a whole other subject. Um, so yeah, two pages is great, two to four pages, I feel like that's respectful of an actor's craft, and we can come in and show you what we can do, and if you like us, you know, pay us. Um, <laughs> so that was my audition scene, and I literally was at the park and I was reading it, and I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> what am I going to do in this scene? And it honestly didn't even all come together until I was in the room. So I had the lines down. I actually, that's the first time I met Gail McKinney. Yeah. yeah, we didn't actually officially meet until we were on the plane up, flying up to Vancouver, but I remember him from the audition room. And, uh, and so it wasn't really until I was in the room and of course, you guys see the finished product, right? You see like all the makeup, this really cool character, um, and the wardrobe, and the blood, and the, but in the audition scene, it's like three dudes sitting on a couch, and you on the other side. <laughs> and I hadn't seen the show, so I don't know the tone. I mean, I watched like some clips of it just to get the tone, but, um, 
But yeah, so then Adam Glass created my character, um, Josie and Abaddon, and he was really great at communicating with me what his intention was. And that's not always the case, so I very much appreciate a writer who communicates and, and um, there, there becomes, um, Shonda wrote, wrote, wrote about this in her book, My Year of Yes. Uh, she, she calls it like a, like a it's kind of like a thrumble. <laughs> it's like you, the writer, and the character. And, um, and you kind of like, your energies blend. And so what we do as actors kind of inspires where the character goes, and the character inspires the actor, and it all inspires the writer. And it's just this really beautiful, you know, creation. Um, I, I kind of like it, call it like a jam session. Um, so with Josie, he was really particular. He wanted her to be really empowered. Um, he, he was named after his daughter, Josie. And, um, and so, you know, she was at a time where there was a glass ceiling. He wanted her to break it. Um, so really, her making the decision to become Abaddon was a conscious, like, feminist decision on Josie's part. Um, to be honest with you, like, I love Abaddon. She was so much fun. I take no credit for creating her. I, she, I just simply allowed her. I just was like the vessel to let her become, and she was so amazing. I think um, with characters like that that are so sort of bad and sinister, there's, there's just really one tone with them. So I feel like the more interesting character, if the story was to be told long term, and the one that I really wanted to tell is I wanted Josie to be more part of the storyline. I think with the men of letters and that whole storyline that came about, I think that would have been a lot of, um, a lot of like something to grab onto to develop. But um, but it didn't go that way because I think that would have been a lot of fun. But I loved both of the characters, and they were they were great. And of course, we're still talking about them years later, so I'm very grateful for that. No, y'all need to ask more questions. <laughs> Hi, I really love you so much, so thank you for coming. Oh, thank you. Um, in um, Smallville, you got to play a hero as Black Canary, and of course, you got to play the villain um, in Supernatural, so we're just wondering what you like to play more, what you had more fun with, as a hero or a villain or a little of both? Um, I mean, just, just the truth of a character. So, I mean, it's fun to play the bad guy, but it's also really fun to delve into, like, the, the dark parts of humanity and what drives, I think, individuals and characters. Um, I remember early, early in my career, I started my career in uh, Texas. I started doing a lot of these little indie films. <laughs> Dallas, I was living in Dallas. And, uh, and I did, like, eight movies in Austin. Um, that was before Austin was Austin. It was like, you could buy a house for like $12,000 or something. <laughs> now it's like a whole city. Um, but I had a mentor, uh, Kit Carson, and he is a writer, he did Ch Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And he was like a mentor of a lot of filmmakers that were coming up in Texas at the time. And I remember he told me, and I probably was like 19 at the time, he's like, you gotta break their hearts. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, you've got to like, you've got to attract the audience. They've got to be on your side. And so I think that's always stuck with me. So good or bad, I think my goal with a character is always to see empathy and, and communication and connection with the audience so that whether she's good and goes bad or bad and goes good, you know, there's, there are, they're gonna be, you're gonna be on our side, right? Because that's the goal is to sort of create characters that you love or characters that you hate. Um, and even finding sort of the balance. Did anyone want to watch The Hundred? Yes. Yeah. So I played the villain on the last uh, season of that show, Nikki, and she was so much fun because she was she was kind of brought on to be this like unhinged, like crazy character. But she her husband dies at the very beginning, so she has this vendetta, but it's like rooted in something. And so I think you know the goal is always to like loop the audience in because y'all gotta I think have empathy for characters, right? Walk a mile in their shoes. So thank you. But I love I love Black Mary. She's a great character. I'm glad that Arrow went. Um, I'm glad that that storyline was being told because I think she's a really bad character. I'm very happy to have played her. Hi. Um, I was curious if you could talk a little bit about what it was like to film the scene with when Abaddon was in the chair with Sam Dean and 
the hand comes up and falls and gets into her mouth and takes a little bit out. In a pre-COVID world. <laughs> yeah, like that's not strange. Those hand in your mouth. Um, it was my hand. So they, uh, yeah, they put the green tape, and it's funny because in a lot of the photos that they use, you can see the green tape on your hands, and that's what they use to sort of go in and paint out the hands um, to put the visifact in there. But um, they, uh, yeah, they, they had they had a person. It was a, it was another person's hand, like come out of the box and like walk across the table, and then when it got to here, they had me do this part. Um, <laughs> So weird. <laughs> um, but you know, it was really cute because they had this, Sam and Dean had this joke that like, oh, they watched Young Frankenstein and that's how they knew how to do this. And they know their characters so well. It was always such a joy working with Jared and Jensen uh, and the whole cast really, but, um, but they, they knew their characters so well and they found those moments, which is I'm sure why it had the longevity that it had and, and um, everybody's, you know, so absorbed and sucked into the show is because these like sweet little moments they're doing something really kind of silly and funny and kind of sinister and then they make a cute little joke and everybody's like oh you're so cute <laughs> <laughs> and that's like pretty much everything that they do in life um but yeah that was that was fun i they they had a little like, you know they had a lot of really fun things for me to do i enjoyed it thank you thank you it was nice of them to give me my head back I do like one of the press photos that goes around is like just my head chopped off and uh, my daughter, Charlie, she was three at the time. She's like, wow, mommy, you're so beautiful. What happened to your head? <laughs> <laughs> Where are we now? <laughs> hey. um, hi. Um, have you ever improvised on the show, like when you were Avedon or something? And if you did, what was it? Um... I'm not that brave. I think it'd be so scary. I, there's some great actors who can improvise. and I mean, there's little things that we can do. I think for me, um, so I've had aspirations for a long time to direct. Uh, and um, I just directed my first piece this year. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, one thing that I, as I'm building this career, I'm aware of having spent 20 years in front of the camera, there's so many nuances and things, even if it's not like a broad improvisation um, in writing, sometimes it's just it's just um, gestures and char you know, character traits that, um, that actors do with their character that makes them a character, that we call it a choice. And, um, and so the, I'll, I'll do those types of things. And for me, a lot of times, uh, directors are sitting, we call it in the village, and it's where the camera is where the, uh, they, have, they have screens so they can see what's happening on set. Other directors will stand on the set and watch it like a play. And that's kind of the direction I aspire to have as a director because I think that there's not necessarily these overt improvisations, but small gestures that you would miss because the camera's not necessarily focused on that actor at that moment but they do something that you're like, oh, I want to go in and capture that. So you're really like utilizing um, the, f the fullness, I guess, of, of, of the talent that you have access to. So, but no, I, I'm, not, I'm not that brave. I'm always admiring of actors who do ground lanes and who do stand up um, and who just have the comfort level to like play with their characters. That's always really admirable to watch. And I just watch, like an audience, when they do it. <laughs> okay, I partake. Thank you. Um, I understand you have children, and I was wondering as they got older if they were allowed to watch the series and how they reacted to you as a mother compared to the characters you play as um, on the series. Yeah, so uh, I have four kids. Um, my oldest will graduate high school this year. He's eight, he'll be 18. Yeah, um, thank you. That's my best job. Um, the most rewarding, as they say. Uh, depending on the day, of course. Um, none of them have watched Supernatural. Uh, a few years ago when I uh, signed on to do the last season of The 100, it was still during summer when we started, and so when I went to the studio, this was again pre-COVID, when you could like bring people to set, um, my daughter Charlie came with me, and I was there for like eight or nine hours, and we were testing the character, getting her hair and makeup and wardrobe, and 
um, kind of meeting all the heads of departments and stuff as we do when we start a new character usually. Um, and so Charlie uh, ran around with uh, the creator of the show, Jason Rothenberg, her, his daughter was there, so they like made friends and were scootering all over the place. And then she just felt like, oh, I, I should watch the show. So she became like a big fan of The Hundred, um, which actually was really cute because one day I printed my script off for the scenes I was doing the next day and we were in the car and I handed them to Charlie and I was like, will you read my scenes with me tomorrow? She goes, oh, I need to be uh, Imori. And I was like, yeah, she's like, she's my favorite. <laughs> that was so cute. I was like, really? Not me? But <laughs> And then Louisa has been so wonderful to Charlie because I was like, oh my god, she's such a big fan. So this is like the only kid that's really watched anything of mine. Um, I did a movie earlier this year and my son came with me, he was my date to my premiere. So yeah. So by default, he watched my movie. Um, and he brought his friend, who I didn't think would be interested, I just was like, we'll go out for a really good meal after. Um, and he, his friend Noah, loved this movie. He's like, oh, that was so cool. I loved it. this happened and that happened. I was like, oh, you were watching. <laughs> um, and then I no, no, none of my kids really watch my shows. <laughs> uh, my, nieces, my nieces became very big fans of Supernatural at a certain point, which was really cute. And all of a sudden, that was really, really important to them. <laughs> and they were living, they were living in, um, in London, and we were out one night. Uh, my niece and my sister-in-law and I having dinner, and Mark Shepard walks in the room. Yeah, and uh, and she's like, my niece was like, oh. and I was like, what? She's like, Rowley's here. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's so cute. I was like, okay. So I went to the bathroom. And I was like, Mark. And he can't. She couldn't talk. Poor thing. She was so like nervous. And you know, he's Mark. So. <laughs> She was gracious and wonderful and took a picture with her and gave her a good hug, so. So I'm forever her favorite auntie. <laughs> good times. Thank you. Hi, Hi, Lynn. Hi. So, it sounded like you were right here. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a latecomer into becoming a fan of not Supernatural, but of Smallville. I started watching it in 2020, and I just finished it, and I loved it, and I thought you were really great in it. And my question is, there's talks that there's possibly going to be a Smallville animated series. And I wanted to know if you would want to come back to play that, and how would it be to see the Canary in animated form? Ooh, that sounds fun. Um, I would love to. I've never done any like voice work. Um, I have a voice agent. I've never done any work. <laughs> um, no, that would be that would be great. I mean, honestly, I uh, I didn't know who the Black Canary was before I got on Smallville, and in fact, when I had my audition for Smallville, it was kind of the same thing. Oftentimes, we don't know what we're reading for, and a lot of times, particularly with properties like DC or Marvel, they are like top secret. You have to sign NDAs before you even get your audition, um, and so for Smallville, I went in for the audition. They hired me. And then we're like, we're still not telling you who the character was because the sides, which is our audition material, it was a spec. So it was just you know, a random scene. They didn't tell us who the character was. Um, and I was like, well, how am I supposed to know how to prepare? And then they finally were like, okay, we're gonna tell you, but it's like top secret, you cannot say anything. This is like pre-Twitter too. Uh, Pre-Instagram, pre-Twitter. Um, which, interestingly enough, I'm, I'm wondering how the show dates because it's like, it's kind of throwback -y, right? Is it, does it look old? They, uh, they remastered some of it for digital, but the first couple of seasons, mm. you know. Yeah, it's fuzzy. And Tom, he's so cute, he's like a baby. <laughs> Tom, he's so handsome. Yeah. Um, he's a good Superman. Uh, and so I feel, so then, so then I found out who the Black Canary was. And I was like, I have to hear that. <laughs> I have <had> children. <laughs> How am I gonna do flips in that outfit? Um, but yeah, I think animated should be super cool. I would love to do that. That'd be fun. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like Stargate has a comic book that's ongoing. Like they, I think, continue to tell the, the story. I don't get paid for it, but anyways. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, I had a question about working on 100. Uh, Chad Brook, I believe, played uh, your husband on that, right? Yeah, that right? Yeah. Oh, good, cool. Um, and he also had a few parts on Supernatural. I was 
met, he was, I met him at the very first convention I ever went to and loved him. So I just first supernatural? No, first ever convention. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I just was wondering, you know, how that was doing, working with him and if you had any good stories from working with him on The hundred. Oh, Chad's great. Um, it's funny because a lot of, like, Vancouver actors, they're on, like, every show. So I remember, um, this doesn't really pertain to Chad, but it does. Uh, I went up a few years, like 2016, to shadow Phil Sabrisha um, as a director. And we went through the whole audition process. And do you want me to answer? <laughs> hey! Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so he, uh, so when I was, we were doing the audition for the episode that uh, Phil was directing, um, they were really careful to be like, okay, she's been on three episodes, played four different characters, she's been on this, like, so Chad is one of those Vancouver actors that's like just been on everything that shoots in the city, and so by the time he got to the hundred, they were saving him for something really good, and they, and then they killed him in the, second, in the first episode. So, um, but he was great. He's wonderful. He's now on Joe Pickett. Yeah. yeah. And he did Resident Evil. He's been killing any time. Baby. Yes, he's lovely. He's a baby. I actually met friends on Facebook after meeting at the convention because we talked so long. And yeah, he's just, I love him and Danny and their baby's adorable. I know. No, it's great. Good people. Good people. For sure. And that's the thing is like 90% of people, you know, we invite them to your 4th of July barbecue. Some people not. But most people, yes. <laughs> You know, we're all just living our lives, doing what we love, which is nice. Hi. Hi. Um, what does your sash say? It's my birthday. Happy birthday! Thank you. Like today or this weekend? Yeah, I'm 25 today. Woo woo! Oh, 25. <laughs> you can have fun. Uh, so my question is, what is one word or phrase you tell yourself every day when it feels like the weight of the world is on your shoulder? Oh, I love that. Thank you. Thank you. That was somebody else. Uh, <laughs> um, I have, we have a saying in my house, uh, everything always works out for me. So, good or bad, everything always works out for me. And then when things really do work out, you're like, wow, everything always works out for me. <laughs> yeah, and then we have this little practice with my kids uh, on the way to school. Um, we do a, a gratitude check. And so as we're driving this one particular part of the hill that we drive, we have this beautiful view of the mountains and the ocean. And so every time when we get to that part, just kind of naturally, we go around the car and say what we're pretty before. So that's kind of a daily practice. Have a great birthday. It's not, not a bad place to celebrate. Have fun in Vegas. For sure. I'll, we can celebrate together and meet and greet later. OK, OK. I saw a cake vending machine yesterday. You just came I was like, whoa. You get like three in the morning, <laughs> walking back to your room drunk. Uh, Hi. 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 First of all, your outfit is amazing. Oh, thank you. Uh, you look beautiful. Thank you. These pants kind of like. Oh, like, right? They slide. They slide. Cool. They slide. I sit down and I'm like, woo! Yeah, they're gorgeous. <laughs> so, anyway, um, concerning the scene getting out of the bathtub, oh, yeah. um, probably not you. But if it was, wow. And if it wasn't, how do you feel when you see that? The naked getting out of the bathtub? Was that, was that, it was me. Was yeah, it naked? What did you see? Yeah, um, well, uh, just, the back, just the backside. I'm just wondering, you know, the scene, she gets out of the bathtub after having her head put back on and everything. Right. And, and, well, and it burns and right. Strangled. But she looks pretty hot. Is it you? Yes, it's me. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, they were really good on that one. Guy Norman B directed that episode, and it was a close set. His wife was actually there that day. She's like, I told him, she's like, I'm leaving, and I told him nobody's in that room with you. I was like, thank you. Right. Um, yeah, I had like a like a bandu top and just nude panties on. Um, but yeah, it's 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 always weird. Um, you know, I watch I watch some shows where people are like naked and having sex, and I'm like, wow, that's a lot. Like. I don't, I don't know. What, I don't know what you do. You like just shoot tequila before that, or just like tap into a whole nother. I don't know. It just feels really vulnerable. Um, that was fine. It was really. Um, I was kind of nervous because I think that was the first episode back of that season, and 
and I, I felt I, I had gotten the script. Usually we don't get the script that far in advance, and that one I got like really far in advance, so I was like super aware of it. But um, but yeah, no, it was. Yeah. Who doesn't want to be like come to life in a bathtub <laughs> from the ashes? She's like a phoenix. Yeah, that's what that one was. Guys, she's a phoenix. Thank you. Thank you. You are um, amazing at both parts. Thank you. I'm just going to keep you around. You can just follow me. You're amazing. Thank you. We all need a friend like that, guys. Hi. Good morning. When acting, do you play a character or become a character? I prefer that I become. Um, I don't know how everybody else does it. I always say, um, you know, it's a process of um, discovery and, um, you know, like like getting into a relationship with anybody, friend or romantic or um, family dynamics. It's a process of building trust. It's a process of understanding. It's a process of being open. Um, and so for me, I do believe I become a character. It's a really beautiful experience, and it's something that's going to be like super artsy for artsy to hear. But um, it's something I almost can't explain that happens, and it's rare. It's like one of these rare moments when you're kind of going about your day, and you're you're like kind of outside of yourself, watching yourself, and you're like, oh, I did that. Oh yeah, I'm still doing it. Here I am, and that's kind of the experience for me. So I always feel like when I'm removed, um, that's when I'm most in alignment with my character. So really, really serious. <laughs> but it's fun, and I'm very grateful for it. Thank you. I think there comes a point, um, you know, when you know a character so well. So you, you watch like the first couple episodes, or first couple seasons of a show, um, which is which is one of my um, biggest frustrations with uh, Stargate. Um, if anyone watched Stargate, Stargate Universe, we only got two seasons, and. And it was funny because there was a lot of like negativity leading up to it because a, a lot of people liked the other Stargates and they thought liking this one would, would mean they didn't like them. You know, it's like having kids. You love them all. Sometimes. Um, <laughs> depending on the day. And, uh, but I felt, and, then, and then, you know, years and years later, I'll have people come up to me and they're like, I really didn't like Universe at first, but then like, it got really good. Like, I just didn't give it a chance. And, and that's because we were working on our kinks, too. Like, we, we have to learn to get, our, get to know our characters. The writers have to um, know who we are. And, um, and then the cast has to sort of, you know, blend. Um, which, again, when you have such a long-running show like Supernatural, uh, where they essentially are in part their characters, um, you know, it translates. And that's why we get, we get this audience uh, interaction. Uh, so yeah, becoming, being, I guess it's all the same process. Thanks. Are we over here I have oh, a follow-up if you don't mind. Sure. Um, you said you become the character, and do you ever have trouble um, unbecoming that character? Thank you, that's a great question. Um, yeah. Yeah, sometimes. I remember, again, on Stargate, um, TJ, she like cried a lot, and I was like, God, this bitch is whiny. <laughs> I would get mad. I'd read a script, and I was like, honestly, guys, she's really capable. But I think that was something that I had to, I had to learn her vulnerability, which was really empowering for me, Elena, um, to take that into my life. Because at the time, I was in my late twenties, going into my thirties, um, and I would go home from work a lot and like have a headache. And I was like, what is wrong with me? I'm like, oh, I cried all day. Um, and even, even, um, even, you know, in an audition, if it's something that's really, really heavy, it, it is kind of hard to untap from it, which, which is an audience experience as well, right? Like when you watch a show, I'm watching The Handmaid's Tale right now. Uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> Low key, I am depressed. I was like watching it, I live in Washington, it's like cold and dreary and dark outside, and then I'm watching that show, I'm like, I gotta stop. <laughs> I gotta put this down, it's, it's exhausting. So yeah, you know, and the character dies on a show, you, you empathize and you feel it, so you've gotta kind of like put into perspective what it is. Um, but we're storytellers and we, we resonate with story, and so I'm just grateful to be a part of that process. Thank you. Hey, 
was fine. Um, so Avatar went through a lot, um, and I was just wondering, what was your favorite scene to film as Avatar? So the scene where I got to kick the shit out of Mark. <laughs> Yeah, I tell that story only because it's funny. Um, he, no, it was, it was really fun, and he's such a giver. He really is, but it was really funny. So Brad Priestler, who's one of our camera operators on the show, um, so Mark was like, you know, fastened to the chair, and uh, and I had to like kick him and knock him over, and he was really like, he's like, okay, I'm gonna, on this one, I just go for it, and I'm just gonna knock myself over, and he really wanted to do that, which was great. And then um, Brad went around to all the crew with a deli counter, so everybody took a number, so they could get in line to, to kick Mark's ass. <laughs> so just for that, just for that story, it was really fun. Thanks. Hi. Hi. So I know that you guys have all met through the conventions and stuff like this, but who is somebody or that you've met outside of the show, but here, that you would want to work with their character that you see Jesse or Abaddon having a unique relationship with? Rowena. <laughs> always, always. I mean, Ruth is my best friend. We met at a convention. We've never worked together. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we, we talk about it all the time. We're like, this is so weird how we have such a bond and a friendship, and our birthdays are three days apart. But um, I just love my little Ruthie. She's my bestie. Yeah, so I would love to work with her in some capacity. Um, it, doing anything, I, it, actually the short I directed, I was trying to find like a, a scene for her to do, I ended up shooting it in uh, Brooklyn, so it didn't work out, but um, yeah, I want to work with her forever. And they would make a good team, right? Two genders, one tall one, one small one. Do you see someone, oh, a fan made this like post of like all these photos of me and Ruthie and they compared them, it was like, big dog, little dog. <laughs> Us. Hi. Oh, not you. Hi. Hi. Um, so my question is for Star Universe. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of preparation do you have to do for the role? I was I've been a paramedic for 18 years, and a lot of it was very active. Okay. I would see you perform things, and I'm like, oh, I have no idea how I would do that. So I'm curious, what kind of preparation do you? Do? <laughs> I pretended. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so I had the wonderful fortune of working with my dear friend Mignon Wen. Uh, you might know from, yeah, from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and both that and all this, but from ER. So I always joked that Ming would be watching me, she's like, oh, your medical uh, tactics are so season one. <laughs> um, I, uh, we, did, we did have, with our military stuff, with our medical stuff, um, we did have advisors. They were really, really good about making sure things were accurate. Um, and I think anything that maybe wasn't, I always justify it as it being played off because TJ was so unsure of her capabilities. Um, my only, my only real complaint about that is she was equal in rank to uh, um, Scott, Brian's character, and uh, he always got to like be the lead. And I was like, they're the same rank. Like, why can't she take charge? But they're like, because she's a medic. She's supposed to be neutral. Like at times, I couldn't carry a gun. I'm like, this is bullshit. <laughs> So I brought it up enough, and then, and then I think they started writing more leadership roles for me. Oh, hi, guys. Hello. Thank you. I did do a surgery on there, and I could not get the sutures. And we had a surgeon that was, um, that was uh, advising, and he, I'm sure he was watching me like this. And so he put a glove on and, and did the sutures. So that was not me. I can't remember that one. Um, when you're not here for the Q and A's, and you arrive to come on stage to do your job, like we do, you hear the darndest things. Like, so I put on a rubber glove and took out the sutures. Thank you for watching. What was the lead up to that? Clearly, you're not a fan of my work, Rich. Well, I, I, I didn't know you. Didn't I thought we were friends. I didn't know you didn't under surgical procedures, but count me in.
guessing that is a song choice. Come on, man, we know that. You did, I know I'm listening to it. He's like, Canadian woman, get the hell away from me. <laughs> I don't believe it. Hey, woman, hang out longer. Hey, woman. But that's a lyric. Yeah, I don't know. Know. I'm in a song. I know, but Mike. You put it sound angry. I know I don't want Elena, who's right, she can hear us. She's right there. I'm right here, guys. I don't want her to hear us. <laughs> hey, can any woman? Should we grab lunch at three? <laughs> I'm just saying, the decision to sing that song didn't go past. American woman. Ooh, let's do Canadian. Done. Yeah. yeah. That was it. And then when you're looking at the lyric sheet, like, I'll sing the lyric. Canadian woman, nobody likes you ever. Canadian woman, I'll be dying so good. This is a mistake. I should have thought that through. Oops. Um, anywho. Blaine Norton. Not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's lonely at the top. And pretty lonely at the middle. And really lonely at the bottom. Ladies and gentlemen. Next up to this stage, if Supernatural had a fight,